Thursday night between the Bucks and the Cowboys. That was an awesome way to kick off the season. And now look what else we have coming our way. A few of the headliners here. 1 p.m. Eastern, Steelers at Bills, Seahawks at Colts, and Cardinals at Titans. Look at that 4 p.m. window, too. Browns at Chiefs, the playoff rematch. Dolphins at Patriots and Packers and Saints, but that one, of course, in Jacksonville. So let's dig into some of these matchups a little bit further here with the walkthrough, starting with the premier 1 p.m. game, Pittsburgh at Buffalo. Tons of intriguing storylines here. Can the Steelers make one more run with Big Ben at quarterback? Will Josh Allen carry the Bills to a Super Bowl for the first time since 93? Mike Robb, I know how you feel about this, but I know you're fired up as well. Yes, I am fired up. I want to just gush all over the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen, but I'm going to take it to the Pittsburgh Steelers side of things. And Matt Canada, the new offensive coordinator, you're up. How is this offense going to look? Last year with Randy Finkner, it was a lot of short passes to try to get the ball downfield. Not a lot of attempts to try to run the football. They averaged only about 80, 85 yards rushing, which was last in the National Football League last year. I'm interested in seeing the shifts, the motions, the ways that Matt Canada makes this offense look different and out leverage defenses so Big Ben can give this team a shot to challenge my Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I'm going to take it that way. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see Najee Harris, too. That's going to be a fun one to check out. Also, this one, Browns at Chiefs. Come on, get ready for this. Two crazy talented teams. Cleveland feels like they could finally have a Super Bowl roster while Kansas City, they're starting their quest for a third straight Super Bowl appearance. D. Hall, the Chiefs knocked out the Browns in the playoffs last year. What do you want to see this time? Oh, my goodness, Colleen, this much improved Browns defense. I mean, come on. We know the path to the Super Bowl. As deep as, as deep as this AFC is, the path to the Super Bowl goes through Kansas City. And so this new-look Browns defense, right? You got Miles Garrett. You put Jadavion Clowney on the other side. Malik Jackson up front, the defensive tackle. You go bring in John Johnson, Troy Hill, Denzel Ward when he's healthy. I mean, just an immense amount of talent on the defensive side of the football. You can tell that this Cleveland Browns defense has been put together to stop the Kansas City Chiefs. We'll get a taste of that week one, and I cannot wait. This might be the AFC championship game, M. Rob. Oh, that's Ooh, a little too early preview. To say that. I like it. <laughs> Blasphemy <laughs> on and Josh Allen. Kansas City, oh, that shit. offensive line. Oh, they have two rookies, a first-year starter going. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out with that Browns defense. But let's go to this one. Dolphins at Patriots. It's all about the quarterbacks. Both teams hoping they found their franchise QBs. Year two for Tua. Of course, a career start number one there for rookie Mac Jones. These two, I don't know if you've heard, GZ, they were college teammates. What do you expect here? Little known fact. Little known fact. Both went to Alabama. Thank you, Colleen. <laughs> Mac Jones, distraction free. Ain't that right, Cam? Heading into the regular season. Uh, you know, just talking to talent evaluators around the league, uh, canvassing what they thought about Mac Jones. The, the one guy told me, he said, it's the, if you looked at all the rookie quarterbacks in the preseason, it's the one guy who operated like a veteran consistently and surely Bill Belichick saw that and said that's why he is ready to rock right now he got that endorsement from Nick Saban pre-draft he saw it for himself here we go Mac Jones your time in New England mm -hmm. and an improved defense there in New England should help Mac Jones as well and finally Packers at Saints but actually at Jacksonville. A game moved to Jacksonville due to the hurricane, um, Hurricane Ida. Green Bay coming off back-to-back -back NFC title game appearances. They hope to go a step further this year while the Saints, a team in transition with Jameis Winston taking over for Drew Brees. So providing the insight you need on this matchup, we say good morning to Stacey Dales, who will be heading to Jacksonville shortly. How are you, Stace? What should we be looking for in this matchup? What excites you? Good morning, Call, and um, to the guys. Uh, first and foremost, uh, my heart is so big today, as we remember, as we never forget. So my heart goes out to all of those affected by 9-11 20 years ago. Um, I say that, and I also reflect on this game and what the New Orleans Saints and the Houdat Nation and the state of Louisiana are going through. And I extend my heart to those people because many of those people are still without power across the state of New Orleans. It's been remarkable the adversity the Saints have gone through being displaced. But when I spoke with their players this week, you guys, 
starting left tackle Teron Armstead said, no sympathy for us. The sympathy goes to those affected by Hurricane Ida, and, and people can still donate, by the way, um, <clears throat> neworleanssaints.com backslash Hurricane Ida. Any amount is important. But we have a football game to play, guys, on this, this big day, this heavy day. And it is the Green Bay Packers against the New Orleans Saints in Jacksonville. And what a way to kick off the campaign for Jameis Winston. I mean, we haven't seen this guy start a football game, guys, since 2019, as you've well chronicled. And he's ready by all counts. I, mean, I talked to his head coach, Sean Payton, this week, and I simply said, where has Jameis Winston evolved mentally? Forget the physical talent because we know he can launch it down the field. We all want to see, Call, if he is able to do that, and they open up this playbook. But Peyton said they were on a bus ride together this past Monday, and Jameis is such a sponge, and he is completely invested in the process. He wanted to know from Peyton, and he has wanted to know, every intricacy of how Sean Peyton strategizes. You guys know he's a, an offensive guru strategizes from week to week incrementally what it takes to win against every opponent. And Peyton told me the maturation process is there. He has evolved and we're going to get to see how all of that has come together. Drew Brees is understudy a season ago as they embark upon their journey against the Green Bay Packers. We haven't even mentioned their drama this offseason. It's going to be a fun one in Jacksonville. There is a ton to unpack in this matchup alone, but I really, really hope that Jameis is able to take that next step because I want him to be good. It just makes everything more interesting. It makes the league more fun. So, Stace, I hope you have a great trip to Jacksonville, and I hope it's a really good game for you as well. I'm pretty sure it will be. Um, so we'll talk to you in a little bit, but let's open up this discussion to the guys here, Michael Robinson, D'Angelo Hall, Mike Garofolo. D. Hall, what do you expect to see here from Jameis? Well, you just heard Stacy talk about how Jameis has immersed himself in this playbook, in Sean Payton's kind of mind to figure out, hey, how can I get better? I think we all forget Jameis Winston was the number one overall pick. This kid has an immense amount of talent. It's just learning to be responsible with the football. And I tell you what, guys, I played against Drew Brees for 14 years when I was in the National Football League. There is no better person to study behind behind uh besides drew Brees, i should say i apologize uh and so i think Jameis will not turn the football over i think he will rely on that check down so i can't wait to watch Jameis go out there and show everybody that hey i am a guy who threw for almost five thousand yards and 30 touchdowns uh yeah but you you, you can't say that stat line without putting the 30 interceptions there too d <laughs> they go hand in hand man they go hand in hand and yes i know he was a first round pick i'm sure i, I know we, we all saw him go first overall but you act like our you know our, our scouts in the national football league ain't never messed up on a number one overall pick before so i'm just saying look i think james winston has the talent right but i i, I just hope that he can be managed from the sideline because if he can't and he gets into that, you know, that, that gunslinger mentality, I'm telling you, he can throw this team to some bad losses. But I have faith in Sean McVay. I think Sean McVay will get him right. You, uh, we're up against the break here, so I'll be really quick. Sean Payton has done a really good job when he's had to use backup quarterbacks instead of Drew Brees. Granted, it's been in small doses, in spot duty. This is more of an extended version of it. I think there's no doubt that he's going to be able to scheme this up to make Jameis Winston successful. I think people are expecting too little from Jameis Winston this upcoming season, at least from an individual standpoint. I agree. Give him some more credit. Sure, he's not going to have Michael Thomas out there, but Alvin Kamara, he's going to go off. I can't wait to see what Jameis can do, and I 